Well, I believe it's uh, very troubling to see the trend that's that's been emerging over the last a few months, even a couple of years, that is uh, attempting to delete him and his legacy from from public spaces and, and indeed from, from, in some cases, from, from the history of Canada. Some of the flaws that some of our leaders had were, in, in, in today's light, uh, are, are very, very negative. And there's no doubt about that. No one's suggesting that that shouldn't be part of the conversation. Statues of Sir John A. Macdonald aren't erected because of his flaws. They're erected because of the vision that he had, uh, the, the, the work he did, the fact that he devoted his life to building Canada. And we are the inheritors of, of that work, and, and that's why I believe it should be remembered and celebrate it. We want to leave a better environment to the next generation of Canadians. Uh, we are, uh, conservatives have a great record on that, being conservationists, uh, uh, bringing in meaningful re uh, new regulations for uh, wastewater, and then in helping cities upgrade their infrastructure so that they can clean up the water before it goes into our rivers, lakes, and here in Halifax is a great example, uh, into the harbour. The carbon tax doesn't do anything for the environment. It chases away jobs and investment. Those emissions will be emitted elsewhere, the jobs will go along with it. One of the points I made in my speech last night, there is a lot of there are a lot of examples where Canada can produce things cleaner because we have tougher uh, regulations or because we have uh, access to che uh, cl cheaper, cleaner uh, power. Uh, we should be taking advantage of that and helping reduce global emissions by using the advanced technology we have and the, the tougher standards that we have here. I've made it very clear, you know, uh, I, I support supply management and I don't believe that that is a situation that we need to, to be in. Uh, the Conservative government in the past, uh, when, when the free trade agreement was originally signed with the United States, was able to preserve and protect NAFTA. And I think some of the things that are lost in this conversation is the vast myriad of support support systems that the U.S. has for their own producers. That's not part of this conversation. So, you know, everything from floor prices to their own uh, quota system uh, in many, many states as well as the U.S. Farm Bill, that's not being talked about. I, I indicated to Maxime after the last leadership race, I said, you know, there are only a few things that he and I disagreed on. Uh, and again, my pitch to members has always been, let's focus on the 80 to 90 percent of all the things we do agree on, uh, not the 10 to 20 percent that maybe we have a difference of opinion on. I've made it very clear that a government should get out of the business of, uh, of trying to affect the markets, of trying to pick winners and losers. I believe that uh, it's essential to unleash the power of free enterprise is to find areas in a, in a way that is respective, respectful of, of, of Canadians who will be affected by the change uh, to, 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 to reduce the amount of interference in the economy that the government currently has. When government gets into those types of things, politics affects a lot of the decisions, not market principles, and that always has a worse effect on uh, the quality of life for Canadians, on their tax bill, and economic growth. Yes, uh, we want to do it in a way that's respectful uh, of the dynamics that the universities face, where they do have some legitimate concerns around how to manage uh, protesters and, and, and backlashes, but at the same time not allowing those uh, people to have a veto, because that's not, the, that's not the right answer either. And also building in some kind of a, a way to uh, evaluate what that framework would look like to see you know, an isolated incident with one person at a university uh, does not equal an entire mindset at that university. So those are the types of conversations that we're having. As I travel, a lot of a lot of parents talk to me about this, and you know, yes, absolutely, there there are legitimate. Uh, uh, not just legitimate case we've made. There, there's, there's jurisprudence, there's, there's case law, and on the rights of Canadians to express themselves and to, and to you know, view things that they 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 want to view. But at the same time, we are living in a much different uh, age than when some of those first court decisions were made about you know uh, books or magazines in, in a store. Now we're dealing with uh, you know eight and nine year olds with, with smartphones and tablets and, and uh, what this conversation is about is giving voice to those people who have that concern and say, okay, what types of tools could we look at to make sure that you know, young kids aren't exposed to that? Uh, so I think further study is, is not just legitimate, I think it's a good thing. 
uh, that we tackle this as a, as a society with, with the right motivation. And, and, and the motivation here is not about restriction of, of individual liberty or, or freedom. The motivation is you know, protecting kids, making sure that, that, that parents have the abilities, have the tools to ensure that, that they are able uh, to, uh, to look at what their kids are uh, watching and consuming and, and just giving them some, some extra tools to work with. We have to fix our procurement system before we do that. We could, we could hit 2% tomorrow just by throwing money at, at a system that we can see uh, has a lot of flaws in it. And we're going to have a fully costed platform that will speak to where we will, uh, where we will find efficiencies in government, where we will uh, cancel some of the wasteful spending that the Liberal government has, has brought in. You know, they've brought in a, a multi-billion dollar infrastructure bank that uh, protects profits for private uh, companies but puts all the risk on taxpayers. So we've already put some markers down saying this is, a, this is not an appropriate way for the government to spend money. We're going to put that into other priorities or indeed to tax cuts to give it back to the Canadian people.